My name is Beth Hobart. Uh, this talk is called Cats, the Musical Algorithmic Song Meowification. Very excited to be here today. Uh, my first time speaking at RubyConf, so thank you. Um, so I have a warning that I give at the beginning of this talk that within the next 20, 25, 30 minutes, you're going to likely encounter some poor singing, um, too many cat gifts, and an excessive amount of silliness. So be prepared. Um, let's get started. So uh, I actually don't remember what my bio says on the website, but I have some changes, life changes that have happened. It's a little bit out of date. So I was a software engineer at Flywheel when I applied for the CFP working in Omaha, Nebraska. And now I am at ThoughtBot in San Francisco, which I'm very excited about. So if you happen to work at ThoughtBot and I have not met you yet, please come say hi afterwards. Um, and let's get started. So I have been told by a few people that one of my strengths is thinking outside the box, or as I like to call it, being really good at coming up with stupid ideas. So a few of my ideas have included Feces Book, a social media website for your poo. Um, that, okay, maybe I should have stopped there. <laughs> um, kombucha, uh, really boozy kombucha. Kombucha is like a fermented tea drink. It's supposed to be healthy, but like, does the, does the healthiness outweigh the alcoholicness if you add a booze to it? I don't know. Uh, another idea, and I don't have a name for it yet, but it's birth announcements, but for features that you release at work. Um, <laughs> Then um, my favorite is Amialica. Uh, it's a US-based anti-social anti network for your cats. Um, and I actually built and released this to a smaller market in Omaha. It was called, it, it, and it still exists, it's called Omiaoha. Um, so you can go there and see it. Um, so slight change of subject, uh, but still very relevant. Who here is familiar with Game of Thrones? Okay, cool. Like most popular television show that's on right now. Okay, good. So I need to give you a little bit of background on me first. So this is me and my husband. Uh, we got married in a bar to the disappointment of both of our parents. <laughs> that's not very relevant. Uh, these are our cats, uh, Xiaogui and Clementine. And Gita, she's an asshole. And yes, this is a, a professional photograph of my cat. This is me and my husband on Halloween a few years ago. Uh, we were really into Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you can barely tell the difference, I think. <laughs> you know. So you're, you're wondering, where are you going with this? Well, um, I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to play you the Game of Thrones theme song right now. If we could get a little louder. Okay. Cool. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. So you may have noticed it doesn't actually have any lyrics, um, which I think is a problem. So um, one Sunday night I was watching Game of Thrones and uh, I just kind of started meowing along. Uh, and that's where this whole talk comes from. So. So you're all familiar with the Game of Thrones theme song. You know what a meow sounds like, meow. So we're gonna do something together. We are going to meow the Game of Thrones theme song. I will get us started, and then you are all going to join in. Are you ready? Meow, 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 cool. Nice job, everybody. We just, thank you. Yeah. Give yourself a round of applause. We just meowified the Game of Thrones theme song. So, probably set some kind of world record for the most people meowing in a room. Um, so, meowifier, it, the application is just one idea in a long line of bad ideas that I've come up with over the years. Um, but it also seemed like a really interesting technology programming problem to solve. And I finally said, what the hell? And I went ahead and I built it. So how exactly does it work? Well, simple, simply you upload 
a song's audio file, and Meowfire outputs a new audio file with that song's melody sung by cats. So I wish I could say there's such a thing as a cat choir. There is not. I googled it. Nothing came up. So it was all up to me to figure out. Um, so yeah, Google. That's great. In my internet research, I came across some very famous music of cats. Probably my favorite is Keyboard Cat. And I would love to keep and finish out that video, but I only have, you know, 25, 30 minutes here, so. Um, so I also discovered I'm not the first person to come up with this idea. Uh, this, is, this is a cat organ. Uh, so there's some really interesting um, <laughs> details about the cat organ. So a historian in the 16th century, okay, so this historian described seeing a cat organ, and wait for it, being played by a bear when King Philip II rode into Brussels. So I honestly have no idea if that's true or not. Like, are all historians trustworthy? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, throughout the years, like people have mentioned cat organs. Uh, so the consensus is that it actually has never been built and it would take, make terrible music anyway because cats don't meow in a fixed pitch, which I'll get to later. Well, until now that is. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna dive right in, um, and and what I decided is that I had some big challenges, and I had no idea how I was gonna build this thing. So I decided I'm gonna make some rules up for myself, um, and I had one thing going for me, which is that I had read Pooter, Practical Object Oriented Designs, Design Patterns in Ruby, or Designs in Ruby, and that's by Sandy Metz. Um, for those of you not familiar, I'm hoping all of you are familiar with that book. If you've not read it, please do read it. Um, so thanks to Sandy, I knew I needed to make my classes really stupid, so plug and play. Uh, I also decided, based on my experience with my legacy code at my last job, that I wanted this uh, application to be 100% test driven, unlike the legacy code at my last job. So, <laughs> so I have these standards set in place, and now it's time to get started. So I have three really big challenges. And the first one is finding a way to obtain the notes of only the melody from a song's audio file. So that's a pretty big one. Then there's correcting the meow length to match the length of the note in the melody. And the third one is creating a multi-octave library of meows. So let's get started with that first problem, the melody. So it's pretty easy for um, a human, especially one with any musical training, to pick up the melody of a song. So the melody, for those of you who are not musicians, the melody is the principal part of the song. So like every song you hear on TV or the radio is a polyphonic uh, song, which just means that there's more than one note going on at a time. Um, but if you were listening to Bohemian Rhapsody uh, by Queen, the melody would be the part that Freddie Mercury is singing. Um, so this is where the bad singing comes in. So the melody is this part. It's like the mama just killed a man or the I see a little silhouette of a man, yeah, so on and so forth. That's the melody. Um, but you know, there's harmonies and bass parts, and I was like, I don't want all those things muddying it up. I just want the melody. So what did I do? Well, compared to a human uh, brain, the computers are pretty unintelligent. We have to tell them everything to do. So writing an algorithm that a computer can understand to extract, extract a melody is incredibly complicated. And maybe you're wondering if I wrote one. I did not write my own algorithm. I did not even try. I did what most programmers do, and I Googled the dark depths of the internet until I found something that I thought could work. And it was so difficult to find. But I finally did find something. Uh, the first tool I, I found is a, is a tool called Sonic API. So it offers professional, professional grade audio technology and uh, high quality world class algorithms. And it was free up to a certain point. So I'm like, okay, I'll give this a shot. Uh, so I have this simple song parser class, and inside this class I have a parse method. So all I needed to do was pass the proper params through to an HTTP call to this API, and then the song file, the song file in my key and all that good stuff, and it's supposed to extract the melody for me and sends me back a response. So this is an example, and I realize how small that is, I don't expect you to read it. I, this is an example of what the responses look like, except imagine literally hundreds and if not thousands of lines long. So this is just a collection. Uh, and this ha actually happens to be the first few notes of the Game of Thrones theme song. So let's take a closer look at one of these. 
So this is what each of those pieces of information has in it. It has four pieces of data per note. Uh, and the MIDI pitch here maps to the pitch of a note. And because, so I'll get into MIDI a little bit later, but because only whole MIDI pitch numbers map to what we think of as standard notes on a keyboard, um, I had to round the note up or down before I could map it. So this MIDI pitch would be rounded up to 36. So let's see what that get, gets us in MIDI mapping. So MIDI, which is short for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, that's correct, yes. It's a, it's a technical standard so that like all electronic musical instruments adhere to the, from different manufacturers adhere to the same role and communicate with one another. So 36 lands us on the C, and this C is two octaves down from middle C for those of you that play the piano. And here's what that looks like on a keyboard. So I don't know, you may have seen me playing the piano this morning before keynote, that was me. I like the piano a lot. Um, I know nothing about electronic music, so this is all brand new to me. But um, what I ended up doing is that, like, I'm really lucky because MIDI is standardized, right? So I just went ahead and I made them constants in my uh, note converter class. So this comes into play after I parse my song. So here's again uh, MIDI, note 36, in its corresponding pitch, C2. And Time for a butt scratch break. We've been talking for a little while. <laughs> All right, you guys aren't scratching your butts. There you go. We'll move on. So see that um, there's an append array method here, uh, append array with note method. So what that method does is it adds the standard pitch to each line in my collection using those constants I just showed you, so the C2. And so I'm talking about this, this hash here. So what, it, what this class does, this method, it adds the note to the, to the end of here. So now, instead of this really long collection with only four pieces of data per line, there's five. So what's next? Well, if you're looking at this, you might think, okay, well, we've got the MIDI pitch down, what's next? Maybe onset time or duration, and you would be correct. So I need to correct the meow length to match the length of the note in the melody. So a melody is gonna have notes of varying lengths, right? Like when you think back to Bohemian Rhapsody, Freddie do doesn't just hold each note for like a half a second each. Some of them are like a quarter of a second or maybe a whole second. It's not like, mama just killed a man. It's Mama just killed a man. You know, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. Uh, but I can't have like a meow folder of with files of every conceivable length. Uh, so instead, I had to find a tool that could either cut or extend a meow to fill the proper amount of time. And like most programmers, I'm like, I'm gonna see if this already exists. And I uh, found, you know, a little bit of googling. Found um, a really great tool that I'm sure a lot of you have already used. Um, it is called FFmpeg. It's been around for like two decades. Um, and I'm, the only problem with FFmpeg is that there's almost too many options. Like I spent a, an inordinate amount of time Googling like, how do I do this? How do we do that? Um, but you know what? I finally got it working. It took a really long time. And so this method right here is embarrassing because it's very long and messy and I did not refactor it and it's been two years. So, um, <laughs> like I said, it took a long time to write, and I was like, oh, I'm done. But let me, let me walk you through it. Um, so, so what happens is we pass in the parsed song, and remember that collection that the API sends back, and then we append that one right here? Um, so we pass that in, and at this point, I need to tell you that there is a library of meows living in my application. Uh, we'll talk more in depth about that soon, but all you need to know right now is there are approximately 88 short audio files, each with a meow in a different pitch like the ones you'd find on a piano. So, this is the part of my code that creates a meow with the correct duration. And this first, this first piece of logic, the if statement, shortens a meow file, while the else statement lengthens one. Um, and, you know, short notes are pretty simple. Um, when the length of the extracted note was shorter than the library file, I just make a copy of that file and I trim, it, I trim off the end of the file to get the correct length. So it looks a little something like this. So if the duration of the note is less than the length note, then you adjust it. So we've got a note duration of only 0.48 seconds while the note to adjust is a whole second. So all I do is I trim it down and actually those don't actually match, wow. Um, Imagine, imagine they're both the same. 
you guys have great imaginations, right? Um, so FFmpeg gives me the ability to do this pretty easily. Uh, granted, I pass the correct arguments in. It gets a little more difficult with the longer notes. Um, and there's so many different ways I could have done this. But the first way, and the way I'm about to show you, um, what I ended up doing was if the length of the extracted note is longer than the length of the meow in my library file, I keep duplicating that meow file until it's longer than the extracted note, and then I combine them to create one audio file, and then I shorten it to match the length of the analyzed note. And so I will show you guys all this in a second. So this is the logic for the long notes. Um, these are really my private, some of my private methods, and it's actually one of the most interesting parts of my, like when I was building my application, and it's probably the first part to go when I start refactoring because I've decided to do this another way. But currently, so the note length is 2.46 seconds, and the file length is only one second long. So first I find the number of loops, like I take simple math. So take the note length divided by the file length, which is 2.46, and then I use the seal method, which returns a, the smallest integer greater than or equal to the float, which is three. And then I use FFmpeg in this method, and I loop my, three, my file three times. I combine it, and then I crop it and save it. So, I mean, that's one way to do it, right? Oh, my GIF, this is, this is that GIF with like Shaq, and he's doing the wiggle, and it's supposed to be full screen. That's okay. Um, the other way that I thought about doing this is like, Oh, what if instead, like, so right now, my meows are, if you, you go back here, so there's actually three meows in this when it's only supposed to be one meow. So the, the next step would be to cut out the middle of my meow and then divide this meow in, in half and, and put, basically fit the middle of the meow and extend it until it's the right length so that you have the beginning of a meow multiple middles of meows, and then an end of a meow. Currently, that's not how it works. But all of those files that I make get stored in an array. And this last part is the step where I combine all the files together in my song builder class. So I, don't know, I don't expect you to read through all of this, but um, it's, uh, yeah, it works. Trust me on it. <laughs> Final words, right? <laughs> Um, so this last part, this is the last, uh, you know, issue I had to solve is like my meow library. So I had to create a multi-octave library of meows, and that's a lot of meows, if you hadn't noticed. And very few cats meow in like the bass, baritone, tenor range. And so, like I already Googled, there's no such thing as a cat choir. So I had to figure out like my own custom meow library using some interesting tactics. So the first one started out with me sitting at my piano, playing a note, and then trying to sing it. And I'm always a tiny bit flat, and my piano is a bit flat because I need to get it tuned. So I was like, well, this is not really cutting it. And I was like, okay, well, what's next? So then like, I got one of those tuner apps on my phone, and I start singing into my laptop's microphone with this tuner app going. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Meow, meow. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna take a while. Cause you know, I can't get it on the first time. Like I, I'm always flat. I promise you, I'm always flat. So I think I got like half an octave worth of notes before I realized it wasn't cutting it. But it was enough for a proof of concept. I only recorded five notes, but I knew a song that had five notes in it. Okay, so my test passed. It, it, it works, all right. Um, obviously this wasn't gonna cut it, I need more than five notes. So I'm like, okay, back to the internet. And uh, like I said, I like taking the easy road when I can. <laughs> so I finally found a few octaves of an auto-tuned man meowing on a free sound website called Freesound. Who would have thought? Um, and here is that first library. So if you remember, a keyboard has 88 notes. 
This is not 88 notes right here. Um, the number of files in this free sound uh, collection only spans, you know, just about four octaves. And I was like, oh, well, I'll give this a shot. That, I mean, it means that I don't have to make my own library. So, but I had an issue, like what was I gonna do if one of the analyzed notes fell outside the range of these notes here? So I had to write some workarounds, like you do when you're a dev. Um, so I had to write it, I had to do an octave modifier. So if uh, a note is too low or too high to fit into the range of notes that I have, then I adjust the octave. So if the note is F7, which is like a really low F, but I happen to have F6, which is the octave higher, then I would adjust it up. So I was like, okay, that, that works. Um, but there was another problem with the library that I downloaded. So each, each note has a pitch and octave designation, and you'll notice some of these notes have a hyphen in there. Well, that actually is their sharp designator. So it'll be like F sharp six. Well, if you remember, I already wrote my constants, and they use the sharp designator. So I'm like, well, I'll just write an, another method <laughs> to patch this in so that I don't have to rename every single file in my meow folder. Okay, so I write a formatting method, I'm lazy, and let's see what that gets us. Okay, he's on, he's in tune. That's what I can say for that. I was like, I took all that time adjusting my app to work with that library, but I still wasn't happy with it. So I bit the bullet and I found some meows online and I decided to auto-tune 88 meows and make my own cat li library. And so now I have a cat li a meow library span spanning almost the whole keyboard. And what that means is that this method that I wrote to format my notes, well, I can get rid of that. And this octave modifier that I wrote to modify the octaves, well, I can get rid of that. So cleaning up my code, I love deleting code. I think everybody likes deleting code. Because now I had a full library of notes, like way better. So, I mean, that was my three big problems, right? Like, now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. But first. So this is the Game of Thrones theme song, just to remind you, in case you forgot. And uh, this is what we're going for, okay? Okay, you ready? Okay, we're ready? Can you turn it up a little bit so everybody can hear my failure a little bit better? I mean, it goes on for five minutes. <laughs> so I had some problems. Um, there were, um, there, that doesn't sound like the Game of Thrones theme song. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? <laughs> so it turns out that the melody analyzer I used which was free, you know, wasn't actually world class. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna try this again. So I found something called Melodia. This guy had written his PhD thesis about melody extraction, and I'm like, finally, and he developed some free software and a command line tool, and I was like, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. So I had to actually sign a release form so that the university where he did his research would release me, like release the software to me. And um, this, is, this is the release form. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if they ever read it. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know if they read it because they actually sent me the software. <laughs> and um, it was actually really simple. Like, this is my command in the command line. And like, so I was just testing it out, playing around with it, and it ran really fast. And I was like, awesome, yeah. So. Uh, I have it like save files directly to my desktop while I'm testing it out. And the difference between this software and the previous tool I was using is that this one returns a MIDI file. 
So I need a new class that can translate MIDI files. So um, before I write this class out, though, I, I want to see what this sounds like. So I go to like some free like uh, MIDI analyzer online, and um, it turns out uh, there might be some issues. So um, this is actually Melodia in action. So um, this is jazz on the far left, pop in the middle, and opera. And so uh, the blue is the frequency that the computer estimates the melody to be, and the red is the actual melody. So if you can see, it's really good at jazz and really bad at pop and opera, which is really sad for me because it turns out it wasn't even going to be worth my time to add this to the app. So I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not too happy. I decided to go back to Sonic API, like the first one. And I mean, I'm stuck with this. Yeah, yeah, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Uh, it's far from perfect. Um, so it's a side project, right? Like I'm not getting paid, there's no due date. So like I'm gonna keep working on it. And like I have some ideas, like what's next? I mean, I still haven't written a client side for it. It's all command line. Um, I want to find a better melody analyzer, obviously. But what else could I do in the meantime? Uh, I could pivot slightly. Um, have you, you've probably all heard of Shazam. It's like a song identifier app, right? So what if I take a reverse melody analyzer similar to Sh Shazam to figure out which song a user has uploaded to my website? And then once I find that that song's name, I scrape the internet for a MIDI version of that song and then turn that into a meowified version. Well, I haven't written that yet. <laughs> so it's my next thing on the docket. So next time you see this talk, maybe I'll be done, and maybe I won't. But um, in the meantime, like, uh, you know, it is what it is. And I've had a great time talking about it and building it and sharing all these cat gifts with you. So um, you can find my slides on Speaker Deck, and I will be um, tweeting at that link out soon. And my handle is uh, Hobart Dashery. All this is here. And with that, I am done. Thank you so much for meowing with me.